It's the dictionary. 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 Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Please, if you could, if you are enjoying this show, go ahead and rate and review it on the Apple Podcasts or wherever you like doing that stuff. Email me, dictionarypod at gmail.com. If you want to talk about anything, uh, call the Google Voice number. If you want to leave a message, uh, as you uh, heard, uh, you, you will get played in an episode if you want it to be. Uh, 917-727-5757. I feel like my camera's crooked. Are you a little crooked? Are you getting pulled by a weird cable thing? Maybe that's a little better. Um, Google Voice, uh, social media, at DictionaryPod on on, uh, Instagram, X, Threads. Oh, I hope that list doesn't get longer. Also, Facebook. Um, a TikTok. I haven't done one of those in a long time. My, uh, it's my uh, personal, I guess, at Speedjampar. Uh, you can also check out Instagram, X, and Threads, also at Speedjampar. S P E J A M P A R. Uh, what else? Merchandising, because I think it's fun to buy things of things that you like, and you like this show, so you should buy things. You should also join the Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Get to early episodes. Let's see. Today is August 14th, 7, 7.24 a.m. I'm in my work office. And yesterday, August 13th, I posted uh, five, five episodes. So I think I'm posted through like September 15th. Of course, you're listening to this way later than that. But my point is, that's like a month in advance. And I want to keep keep that up. So if you want early episodes, go to the Patreon. Ooh. Um, And then uh, what's the other thing? Uh, And, you know, $5 gets you exclusives, gets you this video, this wonderful video. You can see my T-shirt. I have lots of fun T-shirts. You'll you'll see them all. Okay, let's talk about the words. The first word is elaborate. E-L-A-B-O-R-A-T-E. Verb from 1611, starting with transitive, one, to produce by labor. Elaborate, ah, because labor is in there. You are producing something by labor. You're working at it to produce it. That, that's not really a, uh, a way that I think about this word, elaborate, producing something by labor. I mean, it makes sense, I guess, but it's not how I think about it. Two, To build up from simple ingredients. And you are building up possibly complex organic compounds. So uh, this is is in chemistry and molecules and stuff. I guess that's maybe a term they use in chemistry, possibly. I don't know. Number three. To work out in detail. The synonym is develop. As in elaborate a theory. Let's think about it. Let's work it out. We're developing it. Elaborating it. Um, Yeah, I think that's more more how I think of the word elaborate. You're adding, well, but what's, what are the intransitive though? Maybe that's going to be even better. uh, One, to become elaborate. So, of course, we look in the previous episode, uh, planned or carried out. Uh, marked by complexity, that's probably the one we're talking about here. To become complex is elaborate. Two, to expand something in detail. To expand something in detail. Uh, that's what I like to do in this podcast. If there's something that doesn't have a lot of detail, uh, a definition that could use some more uh, or is a little confusing, I like to elaborate on it. Uh, So I myself can maybe understand it a little bit better. I got to work it out. Um, But also for you, for you lovely people, uh, I like to elaborate things for you. If it's something that's uh, maybe you don't know. I don't know. I got to cover all my bases. I don't know who's listening to this. Who knows what? Um, So the, the, the definition was to expand something in detail, as in the example, would you care to elaborate on that statement? Would you care to? Oh, yes. Yes, I would care to elaborate. Let me explain. Okay, elaboration 
is a noun. It's like a it's like a celebration, a celebration. We're celebrating everything being expanded on in detail. Elaborative is an adjective. We already talked about uh, the etymology in the previous episode. So, uh, I need to make a sound effect. And it shall be... Maybe I'll make it not so irritating. Okay, the next word. Um, it's the name Elaine. I have a sneeze. Is it going to go away? Are we going to leave all this in? Yeah, let's leave all this in. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I think it's going away. Elaine is the name. It's the name of uh, my grandma. Uh, she's no longer with us, unfortunately. She passed away, but uh, she was the best. She was the best. Capital E L A I N E, noun from the 15th century. Elaine, uh, any of several women in Arthurian legend, especially one who dies for unrequited love of Lancelot. Several women. So I guess there were lots of women in this Arthurian legend. This is King Arthur. He pulled the 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 sword out of the stone. Uh, that's how. That's the legend. That's what they say. Um, uh, but but there was one one of them in particular, I guess, who died uh, for unrequited love. So does that mean that she had unrequited love for Lancelot? Did he have unrequited love for her, and she died for it? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know the story. Maybe we got to put a link in the show notes for Elaine. And um, what are the details about this, about her death, I guess? Um, Elaine, that's all. I, th- I don't know anything else to say about that story because I don't know the details. Of course, there's Elaine on uh, uh, Seinfeld. Um, it was funny to my family because the two of the main characters are Elaine and Jerry. And my grandparents on my mom's side are Elaine and Jerry. Uh, Jerry's Jerry's still around. It would be fun to get him on the podcast, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, anyway, it was just a funny little thing to us, Elaine and Jerry. Next is Elamite. Elamite, capital E L A M I T E, noun from 1874. A language of unknown affinities used in Elam. Would you say Elam? Um, I don't know. Elam. Approximately from the 25th to the 4th centuries BC. Okay, this is something I don't know nothing about. So excuse my ignorance, but I suspect most of you don't know nothing about this either. We got to put a link in the show notes for Elam and Elamite. So it's a it's it's a language. I don't know what it means to be unknown affinities, unknown connections, unknown. We don't know nothing about it, but we don't know where. It doesn't say where any of this was, but the span uh, in in Elam approximately twenty fifth to the fourth centuries BC. So the fourth century BC was. 2400 years ago and the 25th century BC was like 4500 years ago so it's it's a long time ago that that this was being spoken I guess oi it's interesting I don't know anything let's look in the show notes next is there's a lot of words I don't know how to pronounce in this episode Elan, yes, Elan, E L A N, accent on the first on the E goes whoop, Elan, noun from 1864, vigorous spirit or enthusiasm. Vigorous spirit or enthusiasm. I'm feeling so enthusiastic about this. I have Elan. You probably wouldn't say it like that, though. Vigorous spirit. Uh, this is from um, the the Middle French Elan, which, oh, I guess it means a rush, like you're rushing around. Um, from, I don't know how to say this, Celancer, which means to rush, which is from X plus Lancer, which means to hurl. 
So maybe you're hurling things, throwing things. Um, and then there's more at the word lance. So, I, yeah, yeah, sure. Vigorous spirit, enthusiasm. I'm excited to throw things and rush around, get all my errands done. Elan. Hmm. Next is Eland or Eland. Eland, Eland. And it is spelled E L A N D, just like it sounds. Noun from 1600. Either of two large African antelopes. Uh, ooh, there's a lot of uh, scientific information I'm skipping. Uh, they're antelopes bovine in form which I guess that means they're kind of like cows, bovine in form with short, spirally twisted horns in both sexes. So the, the men and the women, the males, the females, the boys, the girls, uh, they, they both have these cool horns. Uh, maybe we got to put a picture on the social media for these elins. The, the, the whole section I skipped, uh, these are the, what are they, species names? Tarotragus oryx and Tragalaphyx oryx and Torotragus derbinianus and Tragalaphus. <laughs> is this, is this, are these real words? Uh, Tragalaphus derbinianus. Derbianus. Derbianus. Wow. Okay. I think those are just various uh, species. Uh, there's a lot more information that I'm not entirely sure about there. But if you are curious about these uh, elins, I gave you so much good information. Uh, this is, it's an Afrikaans word, I believe, which means elk. Uh, we're, we're more used to elk in the States. Uh, so that gives you a bit of an idea maybe of what they look like possibly. Uh, it is from the Dutch word, from the obsolete Greek word, eland, elend, which is probably from the obsolete Lithuanian word, elenis, which is akin to the old high German, elaho, which means elk. And there's more at the word elk. So elands are like elk. That's what I'm saying here. Next is elan, elan vital. Elan, now where is the emphasis? Elan vital. I don't think there's any syllable that gets more emphasized. Uh, this is two words. The first word is exactly like the one about being vigorous and enthusiastic. Elan vital. Uh, the second word looks like vital. V-I-T-A-L. This is a noun from 1907. The vital force or impulse of life. Whoa, hold up. What? This is... Okay, that's a lot there, right there. The vital force or impulse of life. I could spend hours and days talking about this with people, uh, but we're not going to do that because we have, we have to say that especially this is a creative principle held by Bergson to be imminent in all organisms and responsible for evolution. Okay, who's Bergson? B-E-R-G-S-O-N. Definitely got to put a link in the show notes for this whole Elan Vital thing because I think Bergson maybe was the one who coined this phrase possibly. Uh, so yeah, go, go read up on this because this sounds fascinating and interesting and I want somebody to explain it to me because I don't want to go reading no, I will do some reading. Creative principle held by Bergson to be imminent in all organisms and responsible for evolution. So it's in all organisms. All organisms have this vital force or this impulse of life, this impulse to live, right? I don't want to survive. I want to live. Um, and responsible for evolution. It's the thing, it's the thing inside of us that is telling us unconsciously what to do, um, how to survive, what choices to make, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it uh, sounds fascinating to me, and this is kind of one of the things that I think about all the time, just constantly. 
Elan Vital, Elan Vital. No, I didn't have a name for it, but I think about like what compels us to do things. Why the fuck am I doing this podcast? I don't know, but it's fun for me. I like being in front of the camera and the microphone, I guess. And I'm learning stuff, and it's an excuse to be silly. So, you know, I guess that's part of my Elan Vital? I don't know. Okay. Next. We have Elipid. Elipid? Yeah. Elipid. E-L-A-P-I-D. Noun from 1885. Any of a family of venomous snakes with hollow fangs. Uh, I guess are the fangs hollow because they need a tube, a duct for the uh, the venom to go through, or are there fangs that also produce that like venom comes out of, but they're not hollow? They need something to right. I don't know. Does the venom come from somewhere else? I think it comes from the teeth. Well, now wait, that sounds. It must be. It must be. That's how they get it in there. Ha! <laughs> you really need to join the Patreon to see this video stuff. I think it's very important. Okay, elapids. They're snakes like cobras and coral snakes. Those are examples. And the family name is elapidae. Uh, this is from elaps, which is the genus of snakes from the Middle Greek, which I guess is the same word, elaps, which is a fish. <coughs> it's a fish, not a snake. It's a fish. Okay, that's it for that one. Um, I... I I know not everybody will appreciate it, but I'm going to have to probably post a picture of uh, elapid, some example of an elapid snake uh, on the social media, because why not? I know my captions aren't the best. They're not super creative or funny. I try to do something, but I just don't have, I don't have the brain power or the time to really, you know, workshop it. There's a lot of things to post. I've already got to post a couple just in this episode alone. I want to stay up on that stuff. Next is elapse. How much time has elapsed since I started recording? Just over 17 minutes. First form of elapse is an intransitive verb from 1644. The synonyms are pass and go by, as in four years elapsed before he returned. Four years just went by in a flash. They elapsed in a flash. This is from, uh, let's see, the Latin elapsus, which is from the verb elabi. Does not say what that means, but that word elabi is from the E prefix plus labi, which means to slip. L-A-B-I. That means to slip. So time slipping away. Slip slipping away i'm getting older because time is lapsing there's more the word sleep so when you're sleeping you're slipping away into dreamland and time is slipping very quickly uh from your perspective because you're not conscious about hopefully those eight hours elapsing the second form of elapse is a noun from circa 1677 the synonym is passage, like a hallway, um, as in returned after an elapse of 15 years. Okay, no, not a, not a physical hallway. That's not what we're talking about. It's just a, it's just an amount of time, I guess. An elapse is a passage returned after an elapse of 15 years. That's not how I prefer to use this word. That's not how my brain works. I usually think of it in the other way, the uh, the verb, the verb way. Uh, okay. Elapsed time is next. Two words, noun from circa 1909. The actual time taken, that's it. The actual time taken is the elapsed time. How long did it take to do a thing? The, in the, the amount of time that it did is the elapsed time. We have examples, though, as by a boat or automobile in traveling over a race course. So we're talking, typically, in terms of elapsed time, we're talking about a race. Car race, boat race, foot race, train race, plane race. Those are all the races. Okay, next. 
Elasmabranch. I didn't just make up this word. It is Elasmabranch. Brank. E L A S M O B R A N C H, which looks like branch, but it's brank. Elasmabranch. Oh my God, I love words. They're so silly. Go watch my my video. I did the video. Somebody else did the audio. Bulbous Buffon. I know I've mentioned it before, but ooh, you just get some funny words in there. Elasmabranch is a noun from 1872. Any of a subclass of cartilaginous fishes that have five to seven lateral to ventral gill openings on each side and that comprise the sharks, rays, skates, and extinct related fishes. Elasmobranch is also an adjective. Okay, the subclass is elasmobranchii. They are made up of cartilage, so maybe no bones or minimal bones. Cartilage is like a bone, but it's uh, not hard as, as a bone, and so it, uh, it dissolves. It doesn't get fossilized. That's why you never see the dinosaur's ears. Uh, let's see. Five to seven lateral to ventral gill opening. So is the lateral on the side and the ventral is some other part? There's They got gills is the point. Uh, yeah. Elasmobranchs. So uh, sharks, rays, skates, and other fishes. So maybe we also need to post a picture on the social media of an example or multiple examples of elasmobranchs. And that's just a word I like to say. Because it's fun. This is from the Greek elasmos, which means metal plate. From branchia, which means gills. So gills on a metal plate. Do these fish, do they look like they have a metal plate in their brain? Do they act like they have a metal plate in their brain? Do they look like a metal plate? Do uh, Are they strong like a metal plate? I don't know. Something about a metal plate. Next is elastase. Yeah, elastase or elastase. This is a noun from 1949, an enzyme, especially of pancreatic juice that digests elastin. Mmm, that pancreatic juice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of words that end in A-S-E, they, they are these, like, enzymes or are proteins. Do they end in the same suffix? I don't know. I don't remember, but it's it's in, it's a body thing. It's a thing in your body. It's uh, going to eat stuff and do stuff. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, the last word. That's a bad sound effect. It's, it's the word elastic. The sound effect was sort of supposed to be similar to elastic, like you're stretching a thing. That's the sound it makes. Okay, this is the first form of elastic. E-L-A-S-T-I-C. I'm going to skip the synonym information for the next episode. Yes, I am. Okay, elastic, adjective, from 1674. 1A is talking about a solid. It means capable of recovering size and shape after deformation. So once the solid has been deformed, ooh, I don't have anything here. Well, kind of do. I mean, this this thing, if I take this, well, if you see it, it's the foam thing on top of the microphone. If I take it off and I deform it, it is elastic uh, because it will, what does the definition say? Capable of recovering size and shape. It is cap- It will go back to, it will recover its size and its shape after it has been deformed. Okay, 1B, relating to or being a collision between particles in which the total kinetic energy of the particles remains unchanged. Something about particles and energy. Number two, capable of recovering quickly especially from depression or disappointment. Okay, now we're getting into uh, your, your brain, your mind, your emotions. As in the example, my elastic spirits revived. Uh, that is a quote from Wilkie Collins. My elastic spirits revived. So my spirits were down and depressed 
And uh, what was the other word that we had here? Disappointed. I was so disappointed, but my spirits, they are elastic. And so they bounced back from being deformed. Three, capable of being easily stretched or expanded and resuming former shape. The synonym is flexible, as in an elastic bandage. The bandage is elastic. It's stretchy. It's flexible, uh, capable of being easily stretched or expanded, and then it goes to its former shape. That's what elastic is. It's It goes... Number 4A, capable of ready change or easy expansion or contraction. Also, not rigid or or constricted, as in an elastic concept. Okay, so this is an idea. This is a thing. Well, this podcast is elastic. It has been changing and evolving and growing over the years. If you are a new listener, you got to go back to the beginning to hear how different it was. Four and a half, almost five years ago. Uh, so it's elastic. It is possible. It's, it's uh, capable of change expansion or contraction it's not rigid it's it's uh it's uh there's a word i'm thinking of and i can't think of it it's uh there's another one it's elastic it's elastic okay 4b receptive to new ideas the synonym is adaptable as in an elastic mind this is i think a very good thing to have from personal experience I have not always had an elastic mind. There's a plan in place, and then if it changes, uh, either you know for whatever reason, external forces, somebody changing their mind, it is hard for my brain to uh, wrap around that. It was was harder. I have gotten a lot better at that because I've had to deal with it a lot. Uh, so I think I'm more. I now my mind is more elastic, and it can adjust and move freely than it used to. Uh, receptive to new ideas. Oh, yes, new ideas. Okay, well, that's a whole other idea. That's a whole other aspect of this, which is, um, yeah, how receptive are you to hearing somebody else's opinion about a thing? Are you really closed-minded, or is your mind more elastic and able to see other points of view and respect them, if even if you don't agree with them? Right? Right. Elastically is an adverb. Uh, this word is from the Lower Greek elastos, which means ductile or beaten. Ductile or beaten. Uh, okay, which is from the Greek elonin, which means to drive or beat out. I'm having a little trouble connecting these to the word that we know today. That's okay. Uh, probably akin to the Greek word elith, E-L-Y-T-H-E, elithi, which means he went, he went over there. Uh, also from the old Irish luid, L-U-I-D, does not say what that means. So I don't know and I can't help you. And this etymology was not helpful whatsoever, but we know what elastic is. We know it. Okay, well, that is the end. There is some synonym synonym information, which I'm going to push into the next episode, uh, which will, I don't know what day this is airing on, but of course, that'll be either be tomorrow or uh, Monday over the weekend. I don't know what day, like I said. Okay, so it is time to reread the words, and then I'm going to pick a word of the episode, and then I'm going to sing a little song about it because that's what I do for some reason. We had Elaborate Elaine Elamite, Elon, Eland, the emphasis is changing between all these words, Elan Vital, Elipid, no, yeah, it's not Elapid, that's what I was saying, I think, it's Elipid, like elephant, but it's Elipid, Elapse, or Elapse, uh, Elapse, there's two of those, Elapse Time, Elasmabrank, elastase and elastic and obviously there, there's a, there's a part of me that really wants to pick elaine i have to shout out that name again because because it was my grandma's name and i knew her for how many years 36 years almost 
uh, and she was a very big, important part of my life, and um, she she was just a fascinating person. Uh, maybe someday I'll talk more about her, but uh, she was one of the most generous people you ever did meet, and uh, she, you know, she she was she was something else. She was feisty. She was very feisty. And uh, okay, so that's enough about that. I'm not going to pick Elaine as the word of the episode because there's a different one uh, that's also jumping out at me, which is Elan Vital. E L A N, next word, V I T L A T A L, V I T A L. Let's say lots of letters and really confuse you. Uh, that is the vital force or impulse of life, and I just find that idea so fascinating. Elan Vital, Elan Vital. It's the force of life. What are we doing with our lives? Elon Vital. That's all the song you need to do. That's fine. Let's quickly talk about a movie I watched. I believe I mentioned the new Insidious movie. The next one would be the French title is Encore. But the English title is Rise. And uh, yeah, it's French and it's about dance and and more stuff than that but most a lot of dance and it's fascinating and beautiful and uh yeah just it's just really good and i i feel like i want to see it again it was really like inspiring i personally feel like i need to move more so maybe there's more like dance in my future i've never been a dancer so it's very weird to me to even think that but yeah i think just from like a body stretching standpoint it would be really good because i don't move so good uh, yeah, that's it. Go watch the movie Rise, also known as Encore. E-N, next word, C-O-R-P-S. That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.